You know, one thing that really strives home to entrepreneurs is doing things when you first start out so you never will have to regret not doing them later. Welcome to Chronicles of a Nonprofit, where we discuss the highs and lows of entrepreneurship through the chronicles of things that you will definitely face in your career as an entrepreneur, leader, or developer of your life. I'm Dr. Darina Shine. This is episode 54, and you are listening to the podcast pre-record for September 26th, 2023. Welcome. I'm so glad you're here. If you've joined on to this podcast, please like and subscribe so that you will get all the chronicles as they come available on this channel. So for many of you, we understand that the R. Kelly Appeal TV channel is tied and linked to the Chronicles of a Nonprofit as a way to support the Innocence Project of Mr. Robert Sylvester Kelly. So with that being said, the Chronicles of a Nonprofit is discussing ways of entrepreneurship that could benefit an individual in their youth as they're young. So when they grow into their business, when they grow into their brand, they're going to be a success. So today I want to engage you to listen to something that I ran into regarding a young singer, business person, business uh, entity that we may know by the name of Chris Brown. Now, Chris Brown is an R&B singer, and what he has done with his career should teach many of us how to handle business in a developmental type way. So let's listen to this article and then we'll get back and think about some things that is said here. Here we go. Chris Brown reflect Chris Brown reflects on owning his masters since age 29. My children's children's children can eat Afrotech. Since the tender age of 15, Chris Brown has been living out his dreams of being an entertainer. Now, at the age of 34, he is reflecting on how his business mindset has evolved over the years. During a recent episode of the Club Shay Shay a podcast, Brown told host Shannon Sharp that he credits a lot of his success to having good people in his corner, especially on the professional side. His Recipe for Success I've been able to have a great team, you know, Brown shared. I've been through my ups and downs, I've failed a lot financially in the beginning, but now, it's about just creating stuff that creates stuff that's gonna be here for everybody. It doesn't necessarily have to be titled around my actual name or brand. I just want to be able to have a legacy for my family outside of music. I want to be wealthy instead of rich. Chris Brown gives advice to his younger self, John Morant, Zion Williamson, and more Chris Brown gives advice to his younger self, John Morant, Zion Williamson, and more. The Virginia native has low-key been making boss moves since he got in the game. As previously reported by Afrotech during a 2015 interview, Brown revealed that not only was he the owner of 14 Burger King franchises, but when he first broke into the industry as a teen, the A.O. crooner purchased his mother a $1 million home. That family-first attitude remains now that he has a family of his own. As a father of three children, royalty, Igo, and lovely, Brown shares that some of the business choices he made early on will be very beneficial to his offspring in the long run. Making Music History What's more, at the age of 29, Brown made history as the youngest artist to obtain ownership of his masters, and he says it. Will remain that way because it is a necessity for him to ensure that his babies are set up for success. I don't think I would sell them, he told Sharp when asked if he plans to follow in the footsteps of his peers who have recently been cashing in on their catalogs. I might lease them out and stuff like that later, but I don't think I would because I feel like, as a black artist, that's what we've been wanting forever. To be able to get our masters. Setting his children up for success. 
Brown continued, for me to be able to do that and be one of the first young cats to do it, it's like I beat the game. But, I feel like I wouldn't at this point because that's something that my children's children's children can eat off of. So now, let's look at this. As entrepreneurs, people who are spending a lot of our time and energy into crafting our brand and building our careers and saving a legacy for our children and our grandchildren. I think this is a good thing that Chris Brown has decided to promote himself and his masters early in the game so that nobody can take away all of the hard work, blood, sweat, and tears that he has endured. Now, many people in the music industry, aka we will talk about Robert Sylvester Kelly, R. Kelly, he has not had ownership of his masters. And it's sad because he's done so much work over so long of an extended period of time and leaves nothing to show for it except for royalties. Um, having a master's is kind of like giving yourself the edge that you have this Heisman trophy and you can trade this trophy in for money or for, you know, something that could benefit. Um, Chris Brown having the franchises of Burger Kings and all of that at such a young age, that also shows that we must be in the mindset of making sure that our children are capable excuse me, are capable of making the choices to do for themselves as well. You know, that's a good thing that he had such success at such a young age. But we'll see how it plays out over his life. What does he do with this, you know, uh, success? And that's what I want you to understand, entrepreneurs, you know, I had another young lady write me and she was talking about relationships and she was talking about sexual harassment lawsuits, you know, like how that plays a, a role in entrepreneurship. It, it plays a significant role. So you may meet someone that you're highly attracted to, but because you are an entrepreneur, you have a obligation to... You know, you look at your clients and you look at your contractors and you look at the people who validate your entrepreneurship and to build a relationship with them is a little bit iffy. It's risky. It's very risky. So we're going to definitely talk about that uh, soon. But uh, this young lady, she she said in, let me see here. I'm trying to see if I can grab it. Um, yeah, they were talking. Let me pull it up here. <laughs> okay, here we go. She says, I am currently married to a husband that lies and cheats. I am so tired of chasing and finding other women on his phone. Now, mind you, she's an entrepreneur. She works during the day and uh, then she comes home to this. So there's a lot of highs and lows that is in that emotionally for her. But she says, um, I tried everything. Nothing ever works. I don't even know if I love him anymore. And now she's pregnant with a baby girl and the baby is due in September. Um, well, this was back. Let me see. Oh, I'm sorry. The baby is due in March. <laughs> Can someone please tell me if I should just move on? Am I meant to stay with him? And will he ever change? If so, I'm so tired of feeling this way. Any help or guidance would mean the world to me. You know, I I sit and say that I have a zero tolerance for any of this 
bull crap. When you are an adult, you have no reason to cheat because of the fact that you have the obligation and the right to get up to remove yourself in any given moment uh, out of a relationship. It is not a death sentence, you know, marriage or relationship wise. So as an entrepreneur, the very thing that you got to do is keep your eyes on the prize. So if you are so emotionally centered and tied and worried about what is taking place outside of your commitment to yourself and your future and your legacy, then it's going to make it very, very difficult for you to maintain and maneuver through clientele situations, financial situations that arise on a day-to-day basis in a business practice. So I would say to say to you that you're going to do what your heart desires. You're going to do what makes you feel happy. And uh, some people can tell you to leave him. Some people can just tell you that it's not worth it. Some people can say that they've experienced this situation and looking back over it, it's only going to get worse. But you know exactly what you're going to have to do because now you have an innocent child that is coming out of the equation that you can't change that fact. You can't change the fact that you have a child coming out of this chaotic situation. So we can give you all the advice in the world, but you yourself, you're mature enough and you're old enough to understand. And I know you're not, um, if you've been married, um, and you've experienced this situation for however long you have. Uh, you don't tell me how old you are. Let me go back and look. Um, okay. Yeah. You don't say how old you are. You don't say anything. You might be young. You might be 25. You might be 20. You might be older than 26 or 27. Um, you knew that this was a situation for you. You knew that this was not working out before the baby. And so now, you know, being responsible as an entrepreneur or a leader in your life, responsibility is the key. So again, I don't give advice to people on issues like this because I feel that you're going to do what's best for you even if it means to stay and deal with it. Um, Some people can pick up on relationship issues that happen in childhood with this man because um, for him to constantly cheat and lie and manipulate the situation, it makes me think that there are some things that is very immature about him that you didn't pick up on. You didn't get the red flags. You did not pay attention. And because of that, now you're in a consequence that you're going to have to experience. And you're going to have to deal with the high and low of that situation and that scenario. And then you're going to have to breach what should not be very difficult to do. Will you continue to turn the other cheek? Will you continue to allow this man to be a part of the gaslighting relationship that is going to make you or break you as you grow and as you mature? Are you going to be able to face the highs and lows in your business? And are you going to stay consistent with that through the emotional highs and lows of a pregnancy? So if this is already September, um, October, November, December, January, February, March, so you're like two and a half months pregnant. So you're going to have your baby very soon. You know, are you looking at the entrepreneurial practices that you're going to have to focus on and prepare yourself and your business to continue to grow and excel while you're healing, while you're recuperating. So back to Chris Brown, I think that starting these ideas of entrepreneurship and leadership 
is making the next best decision for your life when you are going through scenarios step by step. If you don't make the right choices ahead of the game, it will constantly continue to throw you back many, many steps. And it's going to be a lot harder for you to keep moving forward. It's not impossible, but it's going to be a lot harder. So those are some things that I want you to really consider. My shining entrepreneurs, because this is these are extreme situations. I mean, at what point would we say that Chris Brown sacrificed so much of his youth, his time, his energy, just to be able to save something for his future and for his three children. Why did he do it so differently than Robert Sylvester Kelly? How was his situation any different? Did he learn from his peers? Did he learn that there was some things in business that some some moves in business that just did not make sense and he refused to be a product of his situation and circumstance that's what i think and i think he made a really really good decision at a very young age but i know that there was a lot of sacrifice there too just like with this young woman there's going to be a lot of sacrifices in being in a relationship is for better and or for worse. So I guess this is the worst. What are you going to do about it? You know, when we say married, marriage is a, we don't know what we're going to get. We throw life up in the air and we say, okay, I'm going to commit to this person. And when we're trying to better ourselves, move towards our establishment in life, building our brand in business. Now we got to sit back and think, well, what if this sets me back 10 years? Am I going to constantly blame my significant other or my husband because he distracted my career? No, you allow, we allow everything that occurs in our lives to go through and manipulate us into the experience. Now, some of us are smart and we are strong enough to stay. And some of us are smart and we're strong enough to leave. It is definitely up to you. It is your choice. And that's the beautiful thing about life, entrepreneurs. You have everything you need. You have independence, freedom. You have life. You have, you know, restoration. You have experience. You have mistakes. And you can redo them at any time. It's just like going down the wrong path. A person has the ability to say when they start to see the creepy goblins and the ghouls and all the, you know, weird, crazy things, they can always say, let me go back. This is, this does not feel right. Before I get too deep in the game, let me go back and go down that other path. Cause there was two, maybe I'm not in the, I'm not down the path I need to go. Before the situations begin to occur in our lives and before the cheating, before the lying, before the manipulation, before the gaslighting, before the discards, these are things we need to really and genuinely work on. So entrepreneurs, when you're going through your journal and you're journaling your life, sit back and ask yourself the question, what am I willing to accept? What am I willing to incorporate in the brand of leadership I'm trying to go in my own life. Even being a leader in your own right, you have the ability and the wherewithal to do what you feel is most vital in your life. So I can't tell you, you know, to leave your mate. I can't tell you to leave or stay. But what I can tell you to do is you're in charge of every thing that happens in your life and you are in control. So 20 years down the line, do not blame your significant other for anything that you allowed to happen 
at the onset of this situation. With that, thank you so much for liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing to the Chronicles of a Nonprofit. This is a connection to um, the R. Kelly Appeal TV, but it's not about the appeal. This is about business. It's about development, and it is about empowering people to make the right decisions and choices when it comes down to entrepreneurship, leadership, and basic life skills. So as always, be consistent, be on time, and know that you are the greatest person walking in the shoes in which you walk. So do it good. Peace, and we'll see you next time.